Hello and welcome back to our channel, Subcontinent Biography. Today we are going to give you complete information regarding the life of Bahadur Shah II. So, without any delay, let us begin. Bahadur Shah II, usually referred to by his poetic title Bahadur Shah Zafar, was born Mirza Abu Zafar Sirajuddin Muhammad and was the 20th and last Mughal emperor of India, as well as an Urdu poet. He was the second son and the successor of his father, Akbar II, who died on 28 September 1837. Bahadur Shah Zafar's father, Akbar II, had been imprisoned by the British, and he was not his father's preferred choice as his successor. However, the East India Company exiled Jahangir after he attacked their resident in the Red Fort, paving the way for Bahadur Shah to assume the throne. Bahadur Shah's Reign Bahadur Shah ruled over a Mughal Empire that had been reduced by the early 19th century to the only city, Delhi, and surrounding territory as far as Palam. The East India Company became the dominant political and military power in mid-19th century. Hundreds of kingdoms and principalities fragmented their land outside the region controlled by the company. The company respected the emperor who provided him with a pension. The emperor permitted the company to collect taxes from Delhi and maintain a military force in it. Zafar never had any interest in statecraft or had any imperial ambition. After the Indian Rebellion of 1857, the British exiled him from Delhi. Bahadur Shah Zafar was a noted Urdu poet, having written a number of Urdu ghazals. While some part of his opus was lost or destroyed during the Indian Rebellion of 1857, a large collection did survive and was compiled into the Kulyate Zafar. The code that he maintained was home to several renowned Urdu scholars, poets, and writers, including Mirza Ghalib, Dag Delvi, Momin Khan Momin, and Muhammad Ibrahim Zok. 1857 Rebellion As the Indian Rebellion of 1857 spread, sepoy regiments reached the Mughal coat at Delhi. Because of Zafar's neutral views on religions, many Indian kings and regiments accepted and declared him as the Emperor of India. On 12th May 1857, Zafar held his first formal audience in several years. On 16th May, sepoys and palace servants killed 52 Europeans who were prisoners of the palace and who were discovered hiding in the city. The execution took place under a peephole tree in front of the palace despite Zafar's protests. It was later believed that Bahadur Shah was not directly responsible for the massacre, but that he may have been able to prevent it, and he was therefore considered a consenting party during his trial. During the siege of Delhi, when the victory of the British became certain, Zafar took refuge at the Hamayun's tomb in an area that was then at the outskirts of Delhi. Company forces led by Major William Hudson surrounded the tomb, and Zafar was captured on 20th September 1857. The next day, Hudson shot his sons Mirza Mughal and Mirza Khizr Sultan, and grandson, Mirza Abu Bakht under his own authority at the Huni Darwaza near the Delhi Gate and declared Delhi to be captured. Bahadur Shah himself was taken to his wife's Haveli where he was treated disrespectfully by his captors. When brought news of the executions of his son and grandson, the former emperor was described as being so shocked and depressed that he was unable to react. His Trial 
The trial was a consequence of the Sepoy mutiny and lasted for 21 days, had 18 hearings, 21 witnesses, and over a hundred documents in the Persian and Urdu language with their English translations were produced in the court. Zafar was tried and charged on four courts. On the 20th day of the trial, Bahadur Shah II defended himself against these charges. Hakim Asanullah Khan, Zafar's most trusted confidant and both his prime minister and personal physician had insisted that Zafar did not involve himself in the rebellion and had surrendered himself to the British. But when Zafar ultimately did this, Hakim Asanullah Khan betrayed him by providing evidence against him at the trial in return for a pardon for himself. Expecting Hudson's guarantee on his surrender, Zafar was not sentenced to death but exiled to Rangoon, Burma. His wife, Zenith Mehal, and some of the remaining members of the family accompanied him. At 4 a.m. on 7 October 1858, Zafar, along with his wives and two remaining sons, began his journey towards Rangoon in bullock carts escorted by ninth lancers under command of Lieutenant Elmene. His death in 1862, at the age of 87, he reportedly acquired some illness. In October, his condition deteriorated. He was spoon-fed on broth, but he found that difficult too by November 3rd. On 6 November, British Commissioner H. N. Davis recorded that Zephyr is evidently sinking from pure desitude and paralysis in the region of his throat. To prepare for his death, Davis commanded the collection of lime and bricks and a spot was selected by the back of Zephyr's enclosure for his burial. Zephyr died on Friday, 7th November, 1862, at 5 a.m. Zephyr was buried at 4 p.m. near the Shev de Gon Pagora at 6 Sivaka Road, near the intersection with Shev de Gon Pagora Road, Yangon. The shrine of Bahadur Shah Zephyr Darga was built thereafter the recovery of his tomb on 16th February 1991. Davis, commenting on Zephyr, described his life to be very uncertain. Many individuals claim to be descendants of Bahadur Shah Zephyr, living in places throughout India, such as Hyderabad, Aurangabad, Delhi, Bhopal, Kolkata, Bihar, and Bangalore. However, the claims were often disputed. Bahadur Shah Zafar was a devout Sufi. He was regarded as a Sufi peer and used to accept many pupils. The newspaper Dili Urdu Akbar described him as one of the leading saints of the age approved by the Divine Code. This was all for today's video. To watch more such exciting videos, subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.